Hey, hey, everybody, this is Larry. This is day 13, I think, of the Lico Daily Challenge. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, join me on Discord. Let me know what you think about today's farm. 931, minimum falling path sum. So given an N by N matrix, we turn the minimum sum of the falling path. The next row that's either direct the below or directly left or right okay so you could do this recursively you can do this um you know uh quote unquote bottoms up or just iteratively really because i think technically it's still eh, it's hard to say bottoms up when you're falling but i guess you can also do it in the other way because in this problem i believe hmm, i believe this this for this problem it is um it is symmetric right meaning that you know minimum falling path is the same as minimum rising path from the bottom uh, one cool thing about this that you might not know uh is that um this i mean this may seem trivial now in the sense that if you've done enough dynamic programming problems and stuff like that um it's just like another thing right like hey okay um <clears throat> It's just another, um, yeah. It's just another thing that you do, and you try to minimum a path on a on a on a, a matrix of numbers, right? But actually, when it the first time I've heard of this, or at least someone's similar about this, and it was kind of cool because it was um, it was something that came up. And I'm sorry if I'm telling a little bit of story, but hopefully, you know, you 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 could fast forward if you like, but. But what I was going to say is that I remember there was a paper in the late 2000s or 2000 and nots or whatever, like 2008, 2009, maybe. Um, maybe I got that year wrong. So don't don't judge me for it. I don't all these years blend together now. But but uh, but and at that time, for me anyway, I, you know, I've, I've known a lot about dynamic programming and dynamic programming, um, you know, it has a very mathematical background, meaning that, you know, um, for example, they, they use it to calculate the expected value of, you know, uh, baseball and, and like the states and stuff like that. A lot of this sports analysis uh, or analytical sports are kind of, you know, the, the one of the first things is assuming and figuring out states and then mapping those states to win probability, and et cetera, right? Things that we probably take for granted now, right? When you look, look, pull up you know anything there's you know there, there's some like thing telling you like oh uh you know argentina has a 60 percent chance of winning tomorrow or something like this right also let me know in the comments what world cup team that's left that you're rooting for if you if you're paying attention to this part of the story um uh yeah what i was gonna say about this problem is that if uh, it's not quite related, but for dynamic programming, it is related, which is that if you think about instead of a matrix of numbers, um, or if you think about a matrix of numbers, some things are just a matrix of numbers, right? And what I'm, and the example that I am thinking in my head right now is images. Um, images you can think about as, as, um, as a, you know, a way of, or a matrix of numbers uh, containing three or four values, right? The red, green, and blue, and maybe alpha um, as the alpha transparency, and maybe some other stuff that's like, you know, a function of something. But those are like the maybe the base components that comes up a lot. And, you know, this is stuff that uh, something say Photoshop is based off. And the cool idea behind, or, or one cool idea that I, I remember very, really vividly is around um, content aware. Uh, resizing, yeah, content aware resizing, right? Meaning that, you know, for a long time, if you if you resize, you know, let's say you have a, a box this big, and then you resize it, everything just scales, you know, left to right, uh, or uh, everything just scales, you know, the width wise the, uh, or height wise, it just scales to some uh, constant. Um, multiple factor, right? Meaning that, you know, you divide it by, or you multiply it by like 60%, you want to make it 60% smaller and so forth, right? You know, I mean, I think you're familiar with that and the math is very easy, right? It's just, you know, uh, um, a scaling transformation and it's very easy to do. But coming back and we're at five minutes of story time, uh, how, what, what, you know, what relates to the story, right? What, or what relates to this problem? Well, the thing that relates to this problem is that um, I think this paper about content-aware resizing was just like, okay, 
what if instead of doing this like ugly thing where you know you 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 shrink and and things get squished and you know you have to dance around to get away what if on resizing you just remove the least interesting path right and what does that mean by least interesting path so that's basically the idea right meaning for example and i don't really have examples because like this is off my head everything i do usually is live and that's like i don't know i the power right now or something but um but yeah the least interesting path for example if you have i don't know a picture of larry like with a I don't know, green background, or not green background, but just like me on a beach, say, right? Um, if you want to remove, just say, let, let's say you want to remove one pixel line, right, from anywhere on the thing. Um, if you do it naively, maybe you'll re, re, you know, remove part of Larry's face, which would make me very sad because I, I, I like my face. It's my moneymaker, right? Haha. <laughs> no, no, but, but you may also imagine that instead of removing one line like that, and it, and it a least interesting path may be like, okay, we move something from the sky, we move something from the background, from the, you know, like around Larry's body, and it doesn't have to be, doesn't have to be a straight line, it could be a, a jaggedly line, but just around Larry's body, right? And then now you can maybe, you know, squish it by 10 pixels, and you remove 10 inch, uh, ten boring lines, if you will, right? Um, so that's basically how content-aware resizing works, is that it tries to calculate the least interesting path. And as it turns out, the least interesting path of, or, I mean, obviously there's a lot of different ways to define what's interesting and what's not. And obviously there's artistic interpretation, et cetera, et cetera. And if you look at my Instagram, uh, which, you know, in the link below, you can see some of my pictures and, and my interpretation of what a good image is. Um, you may disagree, that's fine. But what I was, but basically it's about the minimum, minimization of basically you're trying to find a path from the top edge to the bottom edge if you're trying to remove a vertical edge uh that is the least path and it's not, and the cost of the path is the delta between adjacent values right so it's not quite the same as this problem i guess because you're trying to find the minimum sum but but you for example if you're going from black to black you know that's not that as interesting because the colors are, you know, um, very similar. Where you have going from like black to white, there's a huge contrast. So it's maybe more likely to be interesting. Of course, there are other functions that are similar. Maybe like you look at, instead of just looking at the two cells that you're removing, maybe look at like a, uh, an adjacent ones and then there's some convolutions of values and, and they're more mathematical. But when it comes down to it, it is just a minimum path from the top to the bottom, given some cost function and you're trying to minimize it, right? So that's basically the cool idea that, you know, uh, I, I I don't know. I just feel like maybe today was a little bit of a story time. Uh, so, you know, we, we had about eight minutes of story time. Hopefully that's interesting. But it's also because I wanted to provide, you know, um, you know, as a geek, as a nerd that I am, uh, you know, a very common thing that people say is like, OK, but am I actually going to use this in real life or where does it come up in real life? Right. And and this one was a really like. I don't know, like I said, like that, I was going to say 10 years ago, but doing the math is, I guess it's actually closer to 15 years ago, right? So 15 years ago, it's like a Josh ago or like a long time ago, right? So I don't know. So maybe to you, things that are amazing to me may not be amazing to you, but these are things that, you know, if you, when you have the tooling, you can think about it in novel ways and kind of connecting different places. And, and you know, these are just tools, right? Tools are dead. You're you're uh, presumably alive unless you're open AI watching my video. Um, so, you know, there's always uh, room for creativity and, and uh, yeah, and just like figure things out. All right, let's actually start at the bottom. Like I said, hopefully, uh, you know, I, I probably have a couple of videos on this, so maybe it's, uh, you know, whatever, but uh, but yeah, but this is just dynamic programming from the bottom. To, uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, it is shortest path in, uh, in a way because minimum sum is in a way shortest path. You just have to define your edges. Dynamic programming, of course, is the same idea. Um, but yeah, okay. So the f one thing that I always like to do, at least when I'm teaching, is to kind of define... Uh, well, let me, let me set the size of the things first. But... 
and then we could set a DP matrix. Um, I know that you could also, if you're if you're uh, in a rush, say you can reuse reuse uh, the matrix and then do stuff on top of it. But I don't know. I just like to be a little bit more explicit. Um, right. And then the idea here is that DP of IJ is equal to the the minimum sum of any foreign path that force here ends here, right? Something like that. So that's basically, now that we define it, then we can kind of, you know, set the base case. The base case is just the first row, I believe. So now for I in range of, uh, oh, I guess this n by n, so it doesn't really matter, but we sh it should, it, I mean, it doesn't matter if you make a mistake until it does. So I still try to get it right. Um, so yes, I is you go to matrix of zero, I, right? And then now we have for each row, and we start at row one, right? Maybe I should use x, y, I don't know. But yeah, dp of ij is equal to, um, hmm. I'm just trying to think about the best way to write it, write it that's all. Uh, do, 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 mm. Mostly because uh, you're minimizing like three numbers, right? So yeah. So yeah, so for each cell, it can come from the top, uh, you know, vertical or the two diagonals. That's pretty much it. Um, uh, being a little lazy, but eh. Okay, maybe I could just do something like V as you go to infinity. Did I submit by accident? Why is there a shortcut for submission? I don't need to save time. I think I did submit by accident because I I think I. I think I held command and I press enter. I did command enter or option enter or something like this, but I submitted by accident. I don't know what to say. Um, yeah, so then here we are, you go, so, uh, so, okay. I guess this doesn't have to be infinity actually, because there's always one directly on top. So let's just say this is I minus one J. Um, if um, J minus one is greater than zero. V is equal to min of D, uh, V DP I minus one, J minus one. Can't believe I submit by accident though. I mean, wh why is that necessary? Eh. Right, and then this is D, this plus the matrix I of J, which you can avoid. And then now we want the minimum sum. So the minimum sum is gonna be on the last, um, last row. So we just return min of DP sub, uh, or minus one. Oh, whoops, where did that I come from? Looks good, let's give it a submit, unless I fail next zero row or something. Yeah, a lot of story time, and I got a wrong answer because I hit a, I hit a shortcut that really should not be there. Is there a way to turn it off? I, I, like, okay, oh, there you go, I could turn it off. I don't even, eh, I don't need to do that. Okay, so at least I fixed that. Okay, is there any other settings that I need to do? I guess that's the only, no, that wasn't even a setting. Okay, now that I turn it off, I feel a little bit happier. Okay, because that cost me, I mean, at least I, it cost me a submission now versus on like a contest. But yeah, so this is, as you can see, this is R and C time, uh, because basically in a greedy way, we just take the best, the minimum, um, sum of any path that falls in the last uh in the adjacent ones on the last row and yeah um yeah as you can see this is all of r times c and uh, uh, both in time and space so yeah that's all i have for this one i don't think i'm gonna do a bonus question today because i got in a little bit later so um yeah that's all i have for now let me know what you think stay good stay healthy to good mental health i'll see y'all later and take care bye bye